Nation Building in Latin America In the last three sections, you learned about European imperialism in Southeast Asia, Africa, and India. In this section, you will learn how most of the countries of Latin America gained their independence from Spain and Portugal in the 19th century. Nationalist Revolts Social classes based on privilege divided colonial America, Latin America. At the top were the peninsulares, who held all of the important positions. Peninsulares were Spanish and Portuguese officials who resided temporarily in Latin America for political and economic gain and then returned to their mother countries. Creoles were descendants of Europeans born in Latin America and lived there permanently. They controlled land and businesses, but were regarded as second-class citizens by peninsulares. Mestizos, people of European and Indian descent, were the largest group, but worked as laborers and servants. Creoles found the principles of equality of all people, free trade, and free press very attractive. They deeply resented the peninsulares. The Creole elites began to denounce the rule of the Spanish and Portuguese. When Napoleon overthrew the monarchies of Spain and Portugal, the authority of the Spanish and Portuguese in their colonies was weakened. Between 1807 and 1825, a series of revolts brought independence to most of Latin America. Before these revolts, an unusual revolution took place in the French colony of Saint Dominique on the island of Hispaniola. Led by Francois Dominique Toussaint Louverture, more than a hundred thousand slaves revolted and took control of Hispaniola. On January 1st, 1804, the western part of Hispaniola, now called Haiti, announced its freedom and became the first independent state in Latin America. Beginning in 1810, Mexico also experienced a revolt. The first hero of Mexican independence was Miguel Hidalgo, a parish priest. Hidalgo had studied the French Revolution and encouraged the local Indians and mestizos to free themselves from the Spanish. On September 16, 1810, a crowd of Indians and mestizos formed a mob army to attack the Spaniards. The revolt was crushed and Hidalgo was sentenced to death, but September 16th is still remembered as Mexico's Independence Day. The Creoles and the Peninsulares were both frightened by the Indians and the mestizos. They cooperated in defeating the revolutionaries. Then the Creoles and the Peninsulares decided to overthrow Spanish rule to preserve their own power. They selected a Creole military leader, Augustin de Eturbide, as their leader. In 1821, Mexico declared its independence from Spain. Eturbide named himself emperor in 1822, but was deposed in 1823. Mexico then became a republic. Jose de San Martin of, of Argentina and Simón Bolívar of Venezuela have been called the liberators of South America. They led revolutions throughout the continent. San Martin believed that the Spaniards must be removed from all of South America if any South American nation was to be freed. By 1810, his forces had liberated Argentina. Bolivar began the struggle for independence in Venezuela and then went on to lead revolts in New Granada, now known as Colombia, and Ecuador. In January 1817, San Martin led his forces over the Andes to attack the Spanish in Chile. The Spanish were badly defeated at the Battle of Chacabuca on February 12, 1817. Then San Martin moved on to Peru, where he was joined by Bolivar and his forces. 
the last significant Spanish army was crushed at Ayacucho on December 9, 1824. By the end of 1824, Peru, Uruguay, Paraguay, Colombia, Venezuela, Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile had all become free states. Earlier in 1822, Brazil had gained its independence from Portugal. The Central American states had become independent in 1823. In 1838 and 1839, they divided into five republics, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Costa Rica, and Nicaragua. There was still one threat to the independence of Latin American states. Members of the Concert of Europe wanted to use troops to restore Spanish control of Latin America. The British disagreed because they wanted to, they wanted to trade with Latin America. They joined with the United States against any European moves in Latin America. In 1823, United States President James Monroe issued the Monroe Doctrine. He guaranteed the independence of new in Latin American nations and warned against any European intervention in the Americas. Difficulties of nation building. The new Latin American nations had serious problems after they gained their independence. Many people had been killed and much livestock and property had been destroyed. The new nations were not sure of their exact boundaries and went to war with each other over to other to settle border disputes. Poor roads, a lack of railroads, thick jungles and mountains were also problems. They made communication, transportation, and national unity difficult. Soon after independence, strong leaders known as caudillos came into power in many countries. Caudillos ruled chiefly by military force and were usually supported by large landowners. Some caudillos were modernizers who built roads, canals, ports, and schools. Others were destructive. Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, for example, ruled Mexico from 1829 to 1855. He misused state funds, stopped reforms and created chaos. In 1835, American settlers in the Mexican state of Texas revolted against Santa Ana's rule. Texas gained its independence in 1836 and the United States statehood in 1845. War between Mexico and the United States soon followed between 1846 and 1848. Mexico was defeated and lost almost one half of its territory to the United States in the Mexican War. Santa Ana's rule was followed by a, a period of reform from 1855 to 1876. Benito Juarez ruled Mexico during much of this time. He brought liberal reforms to Mexico, including separation of church and state, land distribution to the poor, and an educational system for all of Mexico. Some caudillos, such as Juan Manuel de Rosa in, uh, in Argentina, were supported by the masses and brought about radical change. Unfortunately, the caudillo's authority depended on his personal power. When he died or lost power, civil wars for control of the country often erupted. Great Britain now dominated the Latin American economy. British merchants moved into Latin America in large numbers. Latin America continued to serve as a source of raw materials and food for the industrial nations of Europe and the United States. Exports included wheat, tobacco, wool, sugar, coffee, and hides. Manufactured goods were imported, especially textiles. The emphasis on exporting raw materials and importing manufactured goods meant that the Latin American economy continued to be dominated by foreigners. A fundamental problem for all of the new Latin American nations was the domination of society by large landowners. Their estates were often so large that they could not be farmed efficiently. Land was the basis of wealth, social prestige, and political power. The large landowners ran governments and controlled courts. They made, hu they made huge profits by growing export crops 
such as coffee. The masses had no land to grow basic food crops and experienced terrible poverty. Political change in Latin America After 1870, Latin American governments wrote constitutions similar to those of the United States and European democracies. However, the large landowners limited voting rights in order to keep their power. By 1900, the United States had begun to interfere in the affairs of many Latin American nations. As a result of the Spanish-American War in 1898, Cuba became a United States protectorate and Puerto Rico was annexed to the United States. In 1903, the United States supported a rebellion that made it possible for Panama to separate itself from Colombia. In return, the United States was granted control of a strip of land 10 miles wide that ran from coast to coast in Panama. The United States built the Panama Canal there. In December 1999, the canal reverted to Panamanian control. Americans began to invest in Latin America. Beginning in 1898, American military forces were sent to Cuba, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, Colombia, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic to protect American interests. Some of these troops remained for many years. Many Latin Americans began to resent U.S. interference. In some countries, large landowners supported dictators who looked out for their interests. Porfirio Diaz, for example, ruled Mexico between 1877 and 1911. He came to power with the support of the army, foreign capitalists, large landowners, and the Catholic Church. During his reign, the wages of workers declined. 95% of the rural population owned no land. About a thousand families owned almost all of Mexico. After Diaz was forced from power, Emilio Zapata, aroused the landless peasants and began to seize the estates of wealthy landowners. Between 1910 and 1920, the Mexican Revolution caused great damage to the Mexican economy. Finally, new, a new constitution was enacted in 1917. It set up a government led by a president. It also created land reform policies, set limits on foreign investments, and had an agenda to help the workers. Economic change in Latin America. After 1870, a period of prosperity began in Latin America. It was based to a large extent on the export of a few basic items. These included wheat and beef from Argentina, coffee from Brazil, coffee and bananas from Central America, and sugar and silver from Peru. After 1900, Latin Americans also increased their own industrialization, especially by building textile, food processing, and construction material factories. One result of this prosperity was growth in the middle sectors, divisions, of Latin American society. These sectors included lawyers, merchants, shopkeepers, business people, school teachers, professors, bureaucrats, and military officers. These middle class Latin Americans lived in the cities, believed in education, and saw the United States as a model, especially in regard to industrialization. They sought liberal reform and not revolution. Once they had the right to vote, they usually sided with the landholding elites.